In this next segment, you'll hear how President Trump and his campaign were directly involved in advancing and coordinating the plot to replace legitimate Biden electors with fake electors not chosen by the voters. You'll hear how this campaign convinced these fake electors to cast and submit their votes through fake certificates, telling them that their votes would only be used in the event that President Trump won his legal challenges. Yet when the president lost those legal challenges, when courts rejected them as frivolous and without merit, the fake elector scheme continued. At this point, President Trump's own lawyers, so-called Team Normal, walked away rather than participate in the plan. And his own White House counsel's office said that the plan was not legally sound. Let's play the following video produced by the Select Committee. My name is Casey Lucier. I'm an investigative counsel for the House Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. On November 18th, a lawyer working with the Trump campaign named Kenneth Cheesebro wrote a memo arguing that the Trump campaign should organize its own electors in the swing states that President Trump had lost. The Select Committee received testimony that those close to President Trump began planning to organize fake electors for Trump in states that Biden won in the weeks after the election. Who do you remember being involved in those early discussions around the Thanksgiving time um, regarding having alternate electors meet? Mr. Giuliani, several of Mr. Giuliani's associates, Mr. Meadows, um, members of Congress, although it's difficult to distinguish if the, if the members that I'm thinking of were involved during Thanksgiving or if they were involved as we progress through December. At the president's direct request, the RNC assisted the campaign in coordinating this effort. What did the president say when he called you? Essentially, he turned the call over to Mr. Eastman, who then proceeded to talk about the importance of the RNC helping the campaign gather these contingent electors in case any of the legal challenges um, that were ongoing changed the result of any of the dates. I think more just helping them reach out and assemble them. But the my understanding is the campaign did take the lead and we just were helping them in that in that role. As President Trump and his supporters continued to lose lawsuits, some campaign lawyers became convinced that convening electors in states that Trump lost was no longer appropriate. I just remember, I either, I either replied or called somebody saying, unless we have litigation pending that's like in these states, like, I don't think this is appropriate or, you know, this isn't the right thing to do. I don't remember how I phrased it, but um, and I got into a little bit of a back and forth, and I think it was with Ken Cheeseboro. Um, where I said, all right, you know, I mean, you just get after it. Like, I, I'm out. At that point, um, I had Josh Finley email Mr. Chesbro politely to say, this is your task. You are responsible for the Electoral College issues moving forward. And this was my way of taking that responsibility to zero. The committee learned the White House Counsel's Office also felt the plan was potentially illegal. And so to be clear, did you hear the White House Counsel's Office say that um, this plan to have alternate electors meet and cast votes for Donald Trump in states that he had lost was not legally sound? Yes, sir. And who was present for that meeting that you remember? Mr. It was in our office. It was Mr. Meadows, Mr. Giuliani, and a few of Mr. Giuliani's associates. The Select Committee interviewed several of the individual fake electors, as well as Trump campaign staff who helped organize the effort. We were just, you know, kind of kind of useful idiots or rubes at that point. You know, a strong part of me really feels that it's just kind of as the road continued and as that was failure, 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 that 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 got formulated as what do we have on the table? Um, let's just do it. And, and now, after what we've told you today about the Select Committee's investigation, about the conclusion of the professional lawyers on the campaign staff, Justin Clark, Matt Morgan, and, and Josh Finley, about their um, unwillingness to participate in the convening of these electors, um, how does that contribute to your understanding of these issues? I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry um, because I think, I think, in a sense, you know, 
no one really cared uh, if if people were potentially putting themselves in jeopardy. Would you have not wanted to participate in this any further as well? I absolutely would not have. Had I known that the three main lawyers for the campaign um, that I've spoken to in the past and were leading up were, were not on board. Um, yeah. I was told that these would only count if a court ruled in our favor. So that would have been um, using our electors, um, well, it would have been using our electors in ways that we weren't told about um, and we wouldn't have supported. Documents obtained by the select committee indicate that instructions were given to the electors in several states that they needed to cast their ballots in complete secrecy. Because this scheme involved fake electors, those participating in certain states had no way to comply with state election laws, like where the electors were supposed to meet. One group of fake electors even considered hiding overnight to ensure that they could access the state capitol, as required in Michigan. Did Mr. Norton say who he was working with at all on this effort to have electors meet? He said he was working with the president's campaign. He told me um, that the Michigan Republican electors were planning to meet in the Capitol and hide overnight so that they could fulfill the role of casting their vote in per law in the Michigan uh, uh, chambers. And um, I told him in no uncertain terms that that was insane and inappropriate. In one state, the fake electors even asked for a promise that the campaign would pay their legal fees if they got sued or charged with a crime. Ultimately, fake electors did meet on December 14th, 2020 in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Mexico, Nevada, and Wisconsin. At the request of the Trump campaign, the electors from these battleground states signed documents falsely asserting that they were the, quote, duly elected electors from their state and submitted them to the National Archives and to Vice President Pence in his capacity as president of the Senate. Here is what some of the fake elector certificates look like as compared to the real ones. But these ballots had no legal effect. In an email produced to the select committee, Dr. Eastman told a Trump campaign representative that it did not matter that the electors had not been approved by a state authority. Quote, the fact that we have multiple slates of electors demonstrates the uncertainty of either. That should be enough. He urged that Pence act boldly and be challenged. Documents produced to the select committee show that the Trump campaign took steps to ensure that the physical copies of the fake electors' electoral votes from two states were delivered to Washington for January 6th. Text messages exchanged between Republican Party officials in Wisconsin show that on January 4th, the Trump campaign asked for someone to fly their fake electors' documents to Washington. A staffer for Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson texted a staffer for Vice President Pence just minutes before the beginning of the joint session. This staffer stated that Senator Johnson wished to hand deliver to the vice president the fake electors' votes from Michigan and Wisconsin. The vice president's aide unambiguously instructed them not to deliver the fake votes to the vice president. Even though the fake elector slates were transmitted to Congress and the executive branch, the vice president held firm in his position that his role was to count lawfully submitted electoral votes. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes. Which is what he did when the joint session resumed on January 6th after the attack on the Capitol.